Who was Nizami Ganjavi, a Persian literary giant, or a figure claimed by Azerbaijanis and Turkics? This question has sparked heated debates amongst scholars and history enthusiasts alike. Nizami Ganjavi, a luminary of the 12th century, has left an indelible mark on Persian literature. His masterpieces, including Khosrow and Shirin, Leila and Majnun, and Haft Pekar, continue to captivate readers with their profound depth and lyrical beauty. However, the enigma surrounding his identity has been a subject of much controversy. While historical evidence and literary style point towards his Persian roots, there have been attempts to appropriate his legacy for nationalist purposes, asserting an Azerbaijani or Turkic origin. These claims, often fueled by political agendas, have muddled the waters, obscuring the truth behind this towering figure's true heritage. So let's embark on a journey to unravel the mystery and uncover the truth behind Nizami Ganjavi's identity. Nizami lived during the 12th century, a time when Persian language and literature were flourishing. Born in the city of Ganja, located in present-day Azerbaijan, Nizami was a man of his time, immersing himself in the vibrant Persian literary tradition that was prevalent in the region. This period under the Seljuk Empire was a golden age for Persian culture and literature, and Nizami was at its heart, contributing significantly to its richness. Nizami's body of work is extensive and influential. His most famed works include the romantic epic Khosrow and Shirin, the tragic love story of Leila and Majnun, and the allegorical narrative Haft Paikar. These masterpieces, written in eloquent Persian verse, have left an indelible mark on the literary world. They are not merely collections of poems but profound explorations of love, morality and spirituality. These works are not just celebrated for their compelling narratives and poetic elegance. They are also revered for their profound exploration of the human condition. Through his characters, Nizami delved into the complexities of love and the intricate balance between passion and reason. His writings, filled with wisdom and sagacity, have imparted valuable lessons to readers across generations. Nizami's influence extends beyond the realm of literature. His works have permeated Persian art, music and culture, shaping the Persian ethos in ways that are still visible today. His narratives have inspired countless works of art, from miniature paintings to grand architectural designs, and his verses have been set to music, resonating in the hearts of people across the Persian-speaking world. His works, written in Persian, have influenced generations of poets and writers. Nezami's legacy is deeply rooted in the Persian literary tradition. His vivid storytelling, profound wisdom, and masterful use of the Persian language have made him a literary giant, whose influence continues to be felt today. Even after nine centuries, his works continue to inspire, educate, and bring joy to readers around the world, a testament to his enduring legacy. In recent years, efforts have been made to claim Nizami as Azerbaijani or Turkic. This claim, however, is not rooted in historical fact, but rather in political motivation. Some factions have sought to appropriate the legacy of Nizami Ganjavi, not for the sake of historical accuracy, but as a tool to promote nationalistic narratives. These efforts disregard the fact that Nizami lived during the 12th century, a time when the Persian-speaking cultural sphere was thriving under the Seljuk Empire. His works, steeped in the richness of Persian language and literature, are a testament to his cultural roots. To claim that Nizami was Azerbaijani or Turkic contradicts the linguistic and cultural norms prevalent during his lifetime. The assertion of Nizami's Azerbaijani or Turkic origins primarily emerged in the 20th century, largely influenced by political agendas. It seems that these claims were an attempt to rewrite history, to reshape the cultural narrative to serve a particular purpose. Historical documentation, linguistic analysis, and scholarly consensus all affirm Nezami's Persian identity. His works, admired for their linguistic beauty and depth of thought, are inarguably anchored in Persian literary traditions. The themes and motifs in his poetry reflect the socio-cultural milieu of his time, providing us with a window into the Persian-speaking world of the 12th century. Moreover, efforts to assign Nizami an Azerbaijani or Turkic identity often rely on misinterpretations or selective readings of his works. This approach disregards the broader context of Nizami's life and the cultural backdrop against which he penned his masterpieces. It also overlooks the fact that Nizami, like many literary figures of his time, often used allegory and symbolism, which can be misinterpreted when read literally or out of context. 
In conclusion, the claims of Nizami's Azerbaijani or Turkic origin are not supported by historical evidence or scholarly consensus. They appear to be politically motivated attempts to appropriate the legacy of a renowned Persian poet. These claims, however, contradict the historical and cultural context of Nizami's time. During the Stalin era, a narrative was crafted to align Nizami with Azerbaijani identity. This was a time when political maneuvering often took precedence over historical accuracy. The Soviet Union, under the iron fist of Joseph Stalin, was a turbulent place. As part of his strategy to cement his rule and control the diverse ethnicities within the Soviet bloc, Stalin sought to promote regional identities. Nizami Gunjavi, with his immense literary stature, was an attractive figure to reframe within this context. The aim was to foster a sense of regional pride and identity among the Azerbaijani people within the Soviet Union. And what better way to do this than by claiming one of the greatest poets in history as one of their own? But this wasn't a simple case of misinterpretation or wishful thinking. It was a calculated move, where evidence was fabricated to suit the narrative. A verse, supposedly penned by Nizami, was presented as a proof of his Azerbaijani heritage. This verse, however, was later found to be a fabrication, a creation of Stalin's propaganda machine designed to serve his political objectives. As we peel back the layers of this narrative, it's clear that Stalin's motivations were not rooted in historical truth or cultural appreciation. Instead, they were firmly grounded in political manipulation and control. Nizami was merely a pawn in Stalin's grand scheme, his legacy manipulated to serve a political agenda. This brings into sharp focus the danger of historical revisionism, where figures of the past are reframed to suit present-day narratives. It's a stark reminder of the need for rigorous historical analysis and the importance of separating fact from fiction. But as we'll see, this narrative, although widely propagated, was not universally accepted. Many scholars and historians challenged it, presenting a wealth of evidence to counter these claims. And it is in this scholarly disapproval that we find the most compelling evidence of Nizami's true identity. These claims were nothing more than politically motivated distortions. As we move forward, we'll delve deeper into the scholarly arguments that debunk this narrative and reaffirm Nizami's Persian roots. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the true identity of Nizami Gunjavi. Scholars such as Mikhail Kapustin and Jalal Matini have refuted these claims. These experts, along with many others, have dedicated their scholarly pursuits to understanding Nizami Gunjavi and his works. They have tirelessly examined historical records, literary evidence, and cultural nuances to trace Nizami's roots to their true origin, Persian. Mikhail Kapustin, an esteemed scholar of Persian literature, has stressed that Nizami's works are deeply rooted in Persian literary traditions. He points out that Nizami's poetry is filled with Persian metaphors, idioms, and cultural references, making it an integral part of the Persian literary canyon. Kapustin's analysis of Nizami's work reveals a profound understanding and mastery of the Persian language, a testament to Nizami's Persian identity. Similarly, Jalal Matini, a respected Iranian literary critic, has also spoken out against the claims of Nizami's Azerbaijani, or Turkic origin. Matini emphasizes that Nizami's works are a reflection of the Persian cultural milieu in which he lived. He argues that Nizami's sophisticated use of the Persian language and his intricate knowledge of Persian folklore and mythology indicate a deep cultural connection to Persia. Moreover, linguistic evidence further supports the case for Nizami's Persian roots. Nizami's works are composed in Persian, and his command of the language is evident in his complex poetic structures and intricate metaphors. His poetry also adheres to the classical Persian literary norms, indicating a deep understanding and respect for the language's rich tradition. Nizami's extensive use of Persian idioms, proverbs, and metaphors in his works also points towards his Persian identity. These elements are not just linguistic features, they are cultural markers that reveal the poet's deep understanding and appreciation of Persian culture. In conclusion, the scholarly evidence overwhelmingly supports Nizami's Persian identity. The linguistic and cultural markers in his works are undeniable proof of his Persian roots. Despite attempts to appropriate Nizami's legacy for political gains, the truth of his identity shines through his poetry. Nizami's mastery of Persian language and adherence to its literary norms further solidify his Persian identity. His works are not only a testament to his personal genius, but also a shining beacon of Persian literary tradition. 
Attempts to manipulate historical monuments and inscriptions in Nizami's hometown Ganja raise questions about these identity-building efforts. The manipulation of monuments is not a new phenomenon, but it takes on a particularly poignant dimension in the case of Nizami Ganjavi. Consider the controversial act of donating a statue of Nizami to Italy. This was not a simple act of cultural exchange. Accompanying the statue was a plaque that claimed Nizami as an Azerbaijani poet, a misleading assertion that stirred considerable controversy. Many Iranian residents and scholars voiced strong opposition, arguing that Nizami's Persian identity was being deliberately obscured to further a political narrative. Yet what is perhaps even more troubling is the recent manipulation of Nizami's tomb in Ganja. For centuries the tomb bore inscriptions in Persian, reflecting Nizami's linguistic and cultural heritage. However, in a move that stunned many, these Persian inscriptions were removed and replaced with Azerbaijani Turkic verses. This act of erasure is deeply significant. It's not merely about changing the language of a few lines of text. It's about rewriting history, about reshaping the narrative of a region, and about claiming ownership of a cultural icon who belongs not to a single nation, but to the entire Persian-speaking world. It's worth noting that these acts of monument manipulation are not isolated incidents. They are part of a larger pattern of attempts to appropriate Nizami's legacy, attempts that are not founded on historical evidence, but on nationalistic aspirations. In the end, the manipulation of monuments and controversies surrounding Nizami's identity serve a dual purpose. They not only highlight the extent to which some are willing to go to claim Nizami as their own, but they also underscore the enduring significance of Nizami's contributions to Persian literature. These actions are clear examples of identity manipulation. But as we delve deeper into the life and works of Nizami Ganjavi, we come to realize that his true identity cannot be erased or rewritten. It lives on in his poetry, in the Persian language he so skillfully wielded, and in the hearts of those who cherish his literary legacy. In conclusion, Nizami Ganjavi was unequivocally Persian. As we have traversed through the complex tapestry of history surrounding this literary luminary, it becomes clear that Nizami's roots are firmly entrenched in Persian soil. The linguistic depth of his works, his profound understanding of Persian literature, and his mastery of the Persian language all attest to this fact. Throughout this exploration, we have encountered various attempts to appropriate Nizami's legacy for nationalistic purposes. These claims, often stemming from political agendas, have tried to paint Nizami as Azerbaijani or Turkic. However, these assertions crumble under the weight of historical evidence and scholarly disapproval. We have seen how the Stalin era manipulated Nizami's identity to promote regional identities within the Soviet Union. A narrative was concocted, distorting Nizami's true heritage for political gains. However, scholars such as Mikhail Kapustin and Jalal Matini have refuted these claims, emphasizing Nizami's undeniable Persian roots. Nizami's contributions to Persian literature are monumental. His masterpieces, including Khosrow and Shirin, Leila and Madnoon, and Haft Paikar, have left an indelible mark on Persian poetry. His works have transcended regional boundaries and continue to inspire readers worldwide. In recent times, the manipulations of historical monuments and inscriptions in Ganja, Nizami's hometown, have raised further questions about the authenticity of these identity-building efforts. The removal of Persian inscriptions from Nizami's tomb and their replacement with Azerbaijani Turkic verses is a clear example of identity manipulation. Despite these attempts at rebranding, Nizami's true identity remains unaltered. He was, is, and will always be a towering figure of Persian literature. His works are a testament to the richness and depth of Persian culture. This is the identity that history has bestowed upon Nizami. And this is the identity that we must honor and preserve. Attempts to appropriate his legacy for political gains are baseless and historically inaccurate. Nizami's true identity is not a matter of dispute, but a fact solidly grounded in historical evidence and scholarly consensus. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Nizami Ganjavi's true identity. As we've learned today, history isn't always as straightforward as it appears. It's a tapestry woven from countless threads of fact, interpretation, and sometimes, manipulation. The story of Nizami Ganjavi is indeed one of such intricate complexity. 
We've delved into the 12th century, a time vibrant with the flourishing of Persian language and literature, and found Nizami at the heart of it. His profound mastery of Persian language and adherence to classical Persian literary norms are undeniable evidence of his Persian identity. We've also uncovered the unsettling attempts to distort Nizami's identity for political gain, from the Stalin era to recent controversies. These efforts to appropriate his legacy, as we've seen, are baseless and historically inaccurate. Yet despite these distortions, Nizami's true identity shines through his works. His contributions to Persian literature transcend regional boundaries and political agendas. His words, his stories and his wisdom are a testament to his place as a Persian literary giant. So, what can we take away from this exploration? It's the understanding that history is not only about the past, but also about how we interpret it in the present. It's about recognizing the value of truth and resisting the allure of convenient narratives. It's about honoring the legacy of figures like Nizami Ganjavi, who have shaped our cultural and literary heritage. If you found this journey through history enlightening, please like this video and share it with others. It's through these shared explorations that we can unravel the complexities of our past and gain a deeper understanding of our world. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more intriguing content. We've got a wealth of fascinating topics lined up for you, from uncovering the mysteries of ancient civilizations to exploring the rich tapestry of world literature. Stay tuned for more intriguing content on our channel. Until next time, keep exploring and learning.